and like how prevalent that is in our day to day? Yeah, so there's our our brain has a lot of incoming information through our sensory receptors, and it's too much to process everything all the time. We would just be overwhelmed.、Um, I think you know that's part of what babies' brains are doing is they've got all this sensory information, and they have to sort out like what's relevant and what can be I be ignored. By the time we're an adult, we are very adept at focusing on the things that are relevant and for our goals, and ignoring a lot of the rest of that. And so. You notice that, like you said, that great example of you are, you know, looking for a new car. You buy a new car. You're thinking about that particular one. Then all of a sudden, they're popping out everywhere. You know,、um, and it, they were always there. <laughs> they were always around you, but you weren't noticing them because that wasn't your focus. And so, like I said, a lot of that's unconsciously created and、uh, is driven by deeper goals and motivations than we may have, you know, direct access to understanding. Um, but then some of it we can consciously look for and motivate, depending on、um, just shifting our goals. There's、um, I don't know if this comes from Buddhism, but there's this phrase: what your whatever your、um, attention is on will grow. So thinking about that、uh, in lots of aspects of of life, you know, if I'm if I'm focused on something, there's going to become more of that in my life. So am I focused on something negative, like a fight、um, or negative interactions? Uh, or am I trying to focus on more positive things that I want to have growing in my life? So I think that can come down to just basic sort of sensation and perception too, right? Because it's not necessarily that it is is growing, but you're you're taking in more of it because you're telling your brain like that's important.、Um, and some of that, like I said, we don't totally have control over what things our brain is going to focus on. But to tie that back into psychedelics, you know, Aldous Huxley's Doors of Perception, he noticed that. Our normal perception is this little trickle of information, right? Because we're focused on our goals, so we're taking in specific things. And part of what psychedelics does in the brain is,、um, to Aldous Huxley's metaphor, throw open the doors of perception. And so we are getting,、um, and he got that from Henry Thoreau, right? So it wasn't, you know, he's using that same metaphor, so that we are all, all of a sudden are noticing things that are in our environment that we would have just breezed past and and not acknowledged because our brain wasn't focused on that. So suddenly, I'm looking at the wood grain in my bookshelf and noticing how it's rippling like water. And why did I never see that before? You know, <laughs> because most of the time, my brain is saying the wood grain is not important. I'm looking for a particular book on this shelf. So I think that's a really psychedelics give us a really interesting window into our own perceptual system and the way that our brain usually takes in information and the ability for that to shift through a conscious or unconscious change. I brought up about normalcy bias specifically versus a confirmation bias or groupthink bias, because I think normalcy bias literally happens every single day, and it also ties into the concept of a hedonistic treadmill, right? Like our in- internal level of our internal baseline level of satisfaction always increases when you buy a new shiny car, buy a new house, promotion, new partner, but then it always goes back to the default level. And the most happiness you feel will be the first initial short-term period when you got that new car, when you got that promotions, and then it goes back to zero. And you just and our life is literally a cycle of this. The entirety of our life, we'll do it in our twenties, thirties, forties, and fifties, and that's what normalcy bias is. When it's so constant, it just becomes our background, a noise or information. So that's why I wanted to highlight that because I think normalcy bias is more and more prevalent with digitalizations of the world. Social media, everything, right? Because now our perception is not just real, real world base. It's also digital and virtual perceptions. Yeah. Well, how do we move beyond that cycle? Because I think that just feeds into、um, constant hunger and consumerism, right? It's because it's like, well, I need a new thing, and then I need a new thing. I need a new relationship. I need a new car. I need a new TV. I need a new, you know. And then we're just how do I think for me, meditation and, and these other practices can help just be like it's it's enough. Like just appreciate. Your level and and the little details of your life instead of needing that fix of something new all the time too. Hey seekers, if you enjoyed watching that short clip, I strongly recommend clicking here for the full length episode. Here's to discovering more valuable life stories with practical mental health insights. Thank you for watching, and until next time, peace.